Shakan of God. So we'll explain that as we go along. Approaching the, the Shakan of God are approaching the supernatural of God. Is it Shakina or Shakan? Uh, after I was studying this last night, the day before, and the day before, and the day before, I came up on um, different interpretation of this uh, to the extent that they say we should not be using the name or the word Shakina because it refers to uh, a Kabbalistic studies used by the Kabbalistic Jew way back when, and they use the term Shekinah to describe the glory of God, but it has a feminine connotation. So I even had to call Dr. Nelson, because you know Dr. Nelson is a Jew, and he kind of straightened it out for me. So based on that, I'm going to give you my explanation tonight and teach from, from the scriptures as we understand it. Um, so let's go forward. In general, it is accepted that Shekinah is from the Hebrew word shaken, which means to reside or permanently stay. Some studies show that Shekinah, it should be S-H-E, not S-H-A, is a Hebrew word which was coined by the Kabbalistic Jew and indicate the feminine presence of God. However, God is not feminine. That's very important to note. Some people may accept that, but in Jewish theology and in Christian theology, God is not feminine. The masculine Hebrew word, shakan, that's a masculine word, indicate the indwelling presence of God, the dwelling presence of God. This word shakan appears in Exodus 25 and verse 8, where God commanded Moses to make the tabernacle. Shekinah has come to mean the glory emanating from shakan, Shakan, where the presence of God is dwelling or the presence of God is concentrated and the glory that emanates from that presence is called the Shekinah. It's emanated from the Shakan of God and does not have a feminine attribute, but rather is a reference to usage and application. So when I talked to Dr. Nelson, Dr. Nelson said, that's not necessarily the case. It depends on how the word is used. So he explained to me that the indwelling presence is referred to as the shakan, but when the glory flow from that presence is referenced to as the shakina. And so it depends on how that is used. So that is cleared up in, in, in my mind and based on my study with Dr. Nelson's assistance. So we, we go to the dictionary also interpretation. The dictionary says, the presence of God is the Shekinah in the world as conceived by Jewish theology. The presence of God as conceived by Jewish theology. Let's look at an example to explain Shekinah and Shekhan. When you look at the sun, the sun provides life and light, and it provides energy for all life forms on earth. All life forms get its strength from the sun, its energy from the sun. Even the moon gets its energy from the sun, or its light from the sun. The rays of the sun emanating from the sun and touching the surface of the earth is synonymous with the Shekinah of God. The sun itself that has the indwelling power and essence 
to provide those rays is synonymous with the shakan. So wherever the sun is, when it shines, it will, it rays will penetrate or reach places to give life. But the sun has to be present for that to happen. So wherever God is, when his glory moves, when his glory penetrates, when his glory go from place to place in people's life, that's the, the Shekinah of God. But where he is present is called the Shekinah. For example, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 15, we did this last week, a couple weeks ago, but I just want to take one scripture reference to the glory of the bodies. There are celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies. But the glory, notice that word glory, that the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There's one glory of the sun, not a glory of the moon, not a glory of the stars, for one star different from another in glory. How do you know the sun different from the moon? They have a different type of life force. Glory means that which makes it beautiful, honorable, worthy of praise and acceptation, or for God, that which is worthy of praise is awesome and is splendor. For example, if you take fire and you're looking at a fireplace, you see the flame dancing in the middle of the fireplace, you admire the glory of the fire. If you go to the heat, to, to close to the fire, you feel the heat. The heat, the, the, the energy from the fire provides you with some kind of warmth, all because the glory, so to speak, that the fire provides. Every bodies that God creates have glory. The celestial bodies have glory, the terrestrial body of glory. The things that on earth has glory, there's a glory of the sun, there's a glory of the moon, and they all have their purpose of how they provide energy and how they provide life force strength for those on earth. So when it comes to the tabernacle, the Bible said in Exodus 25 and verse 8, and let them make a, me a sanctuary. What's a sanctuary? A dwelling place that I may dwell. So the sanctuary is made for God to dwell. Not that God is not omnipresent, but he's going to put a concentrated force of his presence right there. And from that concentrated force of his presence, all the tabernacle will be lift, lit up because of his presence. When that tabernacle now is lit up, all the glory emanating from that concentrated presence is called the Shekinah. According to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. So when he tabernacle among us, there's another Hebrew word called Mishkan. And the pattern of all the instrument thereof, even so shall he make it. So Shakan is to dwell, and the Mishkan is to, Mishkan is to tabernacle among us. Now it's not, it's not necessary for us to know all of these Hebrew words. And you know, and I'm not the person that always is Greeking and deking you. But however, for the clearer understanding of the word, we're going to have to go to some of the root meaning. So we have shakan, mishkan, and shekinah. Shakan means to, to settle down, abide, and dwell. That's where God's presence dwell. Mishkan now is the dwelling place. Where is he abiding? Is the dwelling place in the Old Testament was the tabernacle. So the word Mishkan become to mean tabernacle or dwelling place. Now, Shekinah is a manifestation of the presence of God from the Shekinah, the divine presence. The divine presence, the glory of God, the visible manifestation of the glory of God. The glory of the divine presence conventionally represented as light conventionally represented as 
as that bright light which you cannot approach onto. So the Shakan now is the dwelling or settling place of God, his concentrated presence, where he dwell or inhabits or remain or rest. So when God is omnipresent, but when they were marching through the wilderness, when they encamp, the glory of God or the Shakan dwell over and inside of the tabernacle. That became a dwelling place, a resting place where God rests and his presence emanates and everybody makes camp around that presence. The dwelling place, the tabernacle in the Michigan, remember this scripture. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt among us is another New Testament word from the Greek, which means tabernacled among us. And we beheld his glory. So he tabernacled and we beheld his glory. So when God tabernacle among us, we gonna see his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the glory of God. The Greek word skine or skinu means to tent, which is this word dwelt among us or dwelt, not dwelt among us, sorry. This word dwelt is to tent or encamp, to occupy, to reside or to dwell. It came also from another root Greek word, which you can check this out. The numbers are there if you're the person that study. Skine, which is a tent or cloth hut, literally or figuratively. So now we are talking about it figuratively, but in a spiritual sense, it's literal because Jesus is the dwelling place of God among us. That's where all of God for humankind presence emanate so he tabernacled among us when he came among us and we beheld his glory glory as of the only begotten of the father the dwelling place when the bible talk about father it's the dwelling place of the spirit of god the dwelling place of the holy ghost full of grace and truth so now isaiah 9 6 become even more clear where he says unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. He came and dwelt and tabernacled among us. So we beheld the full glory of God when we see Jesus. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 says, Without a controversy, great is the mystery of godliness, for God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angel, preached unto the Gentile, believed on in the world, received up in glory. God manifest in the flesh. That's another term that he came to tabernacle among us. He tabernacled among us. When we look at the sun, we see a lot of things that the sun provide. Without the sun, Life would not be possible on earth. The sun, however, is 93 million miles from earth. Can you imagine? And it produces life. It produces light. The size of the sun is 109 times that of the size of the earth. Its mass is about 330,000 times that of earth. Light from the sun take eight minutes to reach earth. 93 million miles, eight minutes to get here. That is fast. Light traveled at 300,000 kilometers per second. Not per hour, per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. In theory, there's nothing faster than light. There's nothing faster than light. If we could travel at the speed of light, 
will go around the earth almost eight times in one second. So you go around the earth and come back to Canada all the way around the earth before I can say one, 1,000. You've been around the earth eight times. That is mind-bottling. Once within one second. Without the sun, we could not live. Life could not be possible on earth. And it would not be possible. The sun is the center of our galaxy. You cannot stare at the sun directly. The light energy would actually damage your eyes. If we were closer, we would burn to death. If we were closer to the sun, most of us would burn to death. Everybody would be burned to death. If we're farther from the sun, we'll all freeze to death. So there got to be a designer. He put the earth just at the right spot for you and I to survive. The sun releases energy at a mass energy conversion rate of 4.26 million metric tons per second. Don't worry about those numbers. They're just mad numbers, big numbers. But if you have an engineering mindset, you'll understand. Which produces the equivalent of a 384.6 yutta, set, yutta watts or septillion watts. That's millions of millions of millions of millions of millions, lots. 10 to the 26, that's 10 with 26 zeros. That's billions and billions. Now, to put it in perspective, therefore, this is the, the energy release from the sun. This is equivalent to 1 billion 820 million czar nuclear bomb. The most powerful bomb that was made on Earth. Just a little release from the sun in one day, in a, actually in one second, <laughs> is equivalent to 1,820 million of those nuclear bombs. You cannot, no matter what man does, they cannot outpower the presence and the power of God. God is the creator. And man is just trying to play catch up. And that's why you must know that you serve an awesome God. And this is just the sun. This is just the sun. If all the sunlight striking earth surface in Texas, Sister Ma, I'm talking to you. If all the sunlight strife in Texas, the earth surface texture alone could be converted to electricity, it would be up to 300 times the total power output of all the power plant in the world. That is mind boggling. This is just the sun. God made the sun. Light emanated from the sun. The sun gave glory to the earth so that the earth can live. Needless to say, if God made the sun and the sun is so powerful, can you imagine God himself? Have anybody ever heard about supernova? Supernova is one of the most powerful, one of the most powerful effect in the universe. It is when a star explodes. Recently, there was, not recently, it's wrong to say recently, but I found this out recently. There are things in the universe which are much brighter than the sun. What I, found out, what I found out recently was there was a supernova that took place. And that was 570 billion times brighter than the sun. Can you imagine 10 times brighter than the sun? Can you imagine 100 times brighter than the sun? Okay, can you imagine a thousand times brighter than the sun? Ten thousand times brighter than the sun. How about a million times brighter than the sun? Can you imagine one billion times brighter than the sun? Woo, that, this, this is, you see where I'm going? This is mind boggling. Can you imagine 570 billion times brighter than the sun? If it was where the sun is right now, earth, everything on earth would just melt. But it's millions and millions and millions of light years 
away from our planet. Thank God. So God is the one who created these things. They think it may be a weird, rare type of supernova called a magnetar. You can, you can read it up. It's in the presentation. But one so powerful that it pushes the energy limit of physics. Or in other words, the most powerful supernova ever seen as of today. And guess who created all of these powerful energy force? God. The glory of God is still more powerful. Let's read from Matthew 17, verse 1. After six days, Jesus take it, Peter, James, and John, his brother, bring them into a high mountain apart, and he was transfigured. His, his visage was changed before them, and his face did shine, wow, as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. His face shine as the sun. Notice the difference between natural light and spiritual light. If you have the intensity of the sun 100 times what it is on you, you would burn to death immediately. But the glory of God is so powerful that it could brighter, be brighter than 100 times of the sun and he's standing right beside you and he spared your life so you don't drop to death. And when you look at yourself, you don't see that some part of your body is falling off. That's what happened to Peter, James, and John. And that's why I said this morning, the Holy Ghost is just a little down payment, just a little fraction of God. A little fraction of God. When you have energies that are natural, they destroy everything that they touch. But when you have energy that is spiritual, it can both destroy natural things and it can also save natural things. That's the awesome power of God. The awesome power of the Shekan. The Bible says, Matthew chapter 28, verse 2, and behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes white as snow. Anything that you approach that is of the awesome presence of God, there's always a strong, bright light, and there is the awesomeness of his presence that lights up everywhere that it touches. The Bible said that our glory clothes is going to be white robe. We're going to be rolled in white. That's our glory clothes, just like the angels. The Lord Jesus gave lights, light and life. John chapter 1 and verse number 4. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Life and light comes from Jesus. Life and light comes from God. He gave us the spoken word, the prophetic and the the prophetic word and God instruction through his ministers gave us the spoken word for us to translate us. Life and light comes from God's word. He gave us the written word, which is the scripture, the Holy Bible. And then he gave us the living word, which is the Lord Jesus himself. So if you need any kind of life and light and any kind of Shekinah presence, Jesus is the one to go to. Moses spent his time in the presence of God until his face shone. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, two tablets of the testimony in his hand, as he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he was talking with God. That is glorious. Because he approached the Shekinah presence of God and he approached the actual Shekinah of God. His, his face just lit up. And Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses and behold, the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near unto him. 
And when Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil over his face. Why did he veil his face? Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and, and, out and told the people of Israel what he had commanded, and the people of Israel would see the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face was shining because he approached the presence of God. This is, this is awesome. He approached the shakan of God. And Moses would put a veil over his face again until he went to speak with him. We can shine and allow our life to shine when we spend time in the presence of God. Your face may not shine as Moses' face shone, which you can light up a whole room. That's the supernatural power of God. But things in your life can be turned around. You can shine in your personal outlook. You can shine in your personal life. You can shine. I think God turns around things for you. You can shine even amidst of difficulty. If you allow God's Shekinah presence to come from the Shekinah in his holy dwelling to your life and in your place and in your spot, let the glory shine unto you you can shine because God is your keeper. He's a source of all life force. And you can shine in his presence. To provide light and understanding, the Bible said the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Excuse me. It gives me direction. It directs my heart. It directs my life. Psalms 119 verse 130. The entrance of thy word giveth light. No, it gives life, but it also gives light. What does light provide? Light provide illumination. When God illuminates your heart with his presence, oh, what a glory that will be. Can you imagine? There are a lot of things that we don't see and we don't understand, but when we come to the presence of God, we can say now, now, oh, I see. You can only say you see because the light of your understanding has been illuminated. The entrance of his word. So for our understanding to be illuminated with God's light and life, we must allow God's word to enter our heart. Because the entrance of his word gives light. And that light will allow his Shekinah presence to shine in our heart. And it gives it understanding to the simple. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. There's no man on the face of the earth that really gets into God's presence and don't feel real joy. If you don't feel real joy, something is wrong or something needs to be made right. Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word provide light and the word provide life and the word provide understanding and the word provide comprehension and the word provides strength, and the word provides upliftment, the word provides courage, the word provides power, the word removes fear, but I have to allow his word to shine in my heart. When his word shines in my heart, I set myself up for the glory of his Shekinah to shine in my life. For you were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We were in darkness, but now we are light, so we should walk as children of light. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of the darkness. 
So this is not talking about our literal day and our literal night. This is synonymous with the darkness of sin and the light of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's synonymous with those two terms. It's not talking about night start about now in nine o'clock tonight, there will be nighttime. No, that's not the night we're talking about. We're talking about the darkness of sin and the light of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are the children of the light. You're a child of God. You're a child of the living God. You're the child of the God that, that created all light force. You're children of the day. You're not children of the darkness or of evil. But you're a chosen generation. You must know the scripture by heart by now. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises. Why are we chosen? Why are we royal? Why are we holy? Why are we special? Why are we peculiar? For one thing, show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. His light is better. Let's say that together. His light is better. Let's say it again. His light is better. Moses had an experience of the burning bush. Burning bush was burning, but it was not burning. This is a famous story of Moses. I'll, sh I'll show you something about the presence of God. The presence of God is so awesome that it can burn on something and that thing don't burn. But if it was natural energy, it would burn and destroy that thing. But the presence of God is so awesome as well that it can hit on the altar and light up the sacrifice and the sacrifice burn. The power of the supernatural is much, much, much more than the power of the natural. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire. God used fire to get Moses' attention out of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned, yet it was not consumed. It burned, but it was not burning up. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And the Lord saw that he turned to see. God called to him out of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. When God calls you, you must always answer. Don't say, mm. Say, yes, Lord. Always answer. Always answer. He said, here am I. And he said, do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Because wherever God's fire dwells, it purifies it and translates it to holy ground. That's why when they go into the tabernacle and the Shekinah presence was over the holies of holies, the priests have to enter the holies of holies with all his life purified and with pure sacrifice or you die. Why? Because it was holy ground. Wherever God's presence dwell, it is holy ground. So it's something that we should take note of. So wherever that Shekinah presence was, it is holy ground. God tabernacled among us a cloud by day and a fire by night. And where you see all the encampment around this tabernacle, the presence of God provide light for everybody in the camp. His Shekinah presence was good enough to provide light for everyone. And I want to praise God for his power. The Shekinah produced the Shekinah. The Shekinah is where the presence dwell. The Shekinah is what emanates from the Shekinah. And the Lord went before them by day in the pillar of cloud to lead them only along the way and by night a pillar of fire to give them light that they may travel by day and by night. 
and the pillar of cloud was by day, and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Whoa! Remember in Hebrews, the Lord says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember that he came and he tabernacled among us and he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Remember that he gave us the Holy Ghost and he said, I, have a, I will not leave you comfortless. I will, woo, I will come unto you. Hallelujah. Because you are special in his sight. When the priest minister in the Ark of the Covenant, the Bible says, and the cherubim shall stretch forth their wings and the high covering the mercy seat with their wings and their face shall look one to another towards the mercy seat. This is what it looks like. The cherubim and the Ark of the Covenant, they, each cherubim was facing each other. So in between the cherubims, that's where the presence of the Lord reside. That's where the concentrated presence of the Lord reside when the priest went in there to minister. What is called the mercy seat? The mercy seat is basically the lid of the ark and the cherubim was on top of the lid of the ark. And thou shalt put the mercy seat above upon the ark and the ark, and in the ark thou shalt put the testimony that I shall give thee. So remember Aaron's rod that budded the table of testimony and the part of manna. And there I will meet thee and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat from between the two cherubims which are upon the Ark of the Covenant. And all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So God have a place that is concentrated presence reside. And from that concentrated presence, he filled the whole camp with his glory. And then the priest would come into his concentrated presence and they would minister there. And while God's concentrated presence was there, it doesn't mean that he wasn't anywhere else because his presence still filled the universe. But for the taking care of his people, he allowed his presence to go before them and as we read, he said, he never leave them. This is God. This is God. Come before his presence with singing and with thanksgiving and with praise. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. So that's why when you sing, you sing on top of your voice because you get putting everything into it to give glory to God. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. When you sing unto the Lord, you invoke and you invite his presence. That's what you do. For the Lord is great, the king above all gods. And Psalms 100 said, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Oh, hallelujah. What does singing do? Singing and prayer do two things. It prepare your heart for God's presence. It prepares your heart for God's presence. Especially singing that honors God. And singing that glorify God. And singing that magnify God. It prepare your heart for God's presence. It prepare your life for his Shekinah to, to reign and to move in you. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. This is an awesome picture. God himself lit the fire upon the altar when Solomon prayed. His presence just came down from heaven and boosh, lit that fire that is awesome. Now you can remember Solomon's prayer. And when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the offering and the sacrifice and the glory of the Lord filled the house. After the Shekinah destroyed or burnt up, 
I want to say destroyed. After the, excuse me, after the Shekinah burnt up the sacrifice, guess what filled the house? After the fire burnt up the sacrifice, the glory of the Lord filled the house. What's another name for the glory of the Lord? That is the Shekinah filled the house. When God comes in in his poor, powerful life force, the Shekinah filled the house. There's another time when God worked from heaven. Elijah was praying. And when he prayed, he prayed to God and said, Lord, let it be known that you are the God of heaven. And Elijah prayed and God answered by fire. And he called ye on the name of your God, he told the other people, and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answered by fire, he is God. Let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Yes, let's do it. Verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came there. What's the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice? That's, that's the time when they used to offer sacrifice in the evening time, roughly about the 3 p.m. Elijah came there and said, Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, that I am thy servant, and I have done all these things according to thy word. Hear, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the God, the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. In other words, turn around their hearts for them to see that you are the God in heaven. What's your purpose on earth? What's your purpose to let your, the glory of God shine through your life? To let somebody know that there is a God in heaven. And you know his name today. His name is Jesus, the Messiah. Then the fire of the Lord, after he prayed, the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. This is nothing for God because his Shekinah presence and his Shekhan presence can destroy anything. And when the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, the Lord, he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. He is the God of my salvation. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He's the God of my salvation. Yes, he's the God of your salvation. I'm asking you to trust him. Trust him. Trust him. That his divine Shekinah presence can be in your life. We're still, wherever God moves in his divine presence, there's always fire. When Elijah was about to be taken up to heaven, Elisha followed him, and when Elisha followed him, Elisha saw the chariots of fire. And it came to pass as they went on and walked, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder, and Elijah went up to, by a whirlwind to heaven. And Elisha saw it and cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. Why? Because he was taken up to Israel. And he took hold of his clothes and rent them in pieces. He was upset that he missed his master, so he tore his clothes. And he took up the mantle of Elijah, that mantle that fell from him, and went back and stood by Jordan. That's the mantle there. And when he stood by Jordan, took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? In other words, is Elijah God with me now? And when he had smitten the waters with the mantle, they parted here and there, and Elisha went over. That was an indication when the Jordan split in two, and he was able to walk over back on dry land. That's an indication that God is with him. What is your Jordan that you may have to cross and you need to know that God is with you. You need 
that Shekhan presence or that Shekinah presence of God to be with you. And he said, he never leave you nor forsake you. Just trust him. The fire of the Holy Spirit, as was promised. How can we finish without talking about the Holy Spirit? The fire of the Holy Spirit is a touch of the Shekhan. The fire, the fire of the Holy Spirit is a touch of the awesome presence and dwelling of God. That's all we get. We get a little down payment. I shouldn't say that's all. I think that's disrespectful to say that. But we just get a, a this down payment of God. And this is what we can handle. We couldn't handle anything else. That's all we could handle. That's what I mean to say. That's all we can handle. And John said, I did baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that coming after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I am not worthy to lose the beer. I, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Woo, fire, fire, fire. Fire started from the tabernacle. Fire started with the children of Israel. Fire was upon Mount Carmel. Fire was with Elijah. Fire was at Solomon's temple. So you see when God give you a little deposit, he got a deposit with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's his shakan presence with you, the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. Let's, let's praise God. Let's bless him. John had a glimpse of him in the book of Revelation. And John says, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just worship him wherever you are. Just, just say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John says, Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven candle sticks or golden lampstand. And in the midst of the seven lampstand was one like the Son of Man. Let's look at what he looks like. No supernova can touch this. No sun can touch this. One like the Son of Man, clothed with garment down to his feet, girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair was like wool, white as wool, and as white as snow. You notice anything to do with God's glory is always white, 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 or light. White, 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 or light. White, 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 or light. That's why you're going to be clothed in white. The saints going to be robed in white. The angel sitting at the tomb of Jesus was in white. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish you were all here. I could preach a little. His head and his hair were white like light, like wool, and as white as snow. And his eyes like flame of fire. Notice, flame of fire. His feet was like Brass as if refined in a furnace. His voice was as the sound of many waters. John had a glimpse of him. And he had in his right hand seven star out of his mouth went a sharp twisted sword. And his countenance, I told you this is your God, was like the sun shineth in his strength. This is brighter than the sun. And this light is a light that no natural phenomenon can touch because this is the real shakan, the real power, the real presence, the real essence of God, anointing strength. This is God himself. His countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. His face, the English Standard Version says, was like the sun shining in full strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. Man cannot approach the presence of God and stand still. On the Mount of Transfiguration, they fell on their feet. They fell on their faces too when Jesus was transfigured. And that was just a little glimpse. Can you imagine the real glory, the real power, the real presence of God that he said, you're going to be endued with. And when I saw him, I fell on his face as dead. But, I, but he laid his hand on me and said unto me, do not be afraid. You notice throughout scripture, oh, uh, we, we see so many times 
Jesus, when he wants to comfort his people, he just says, oh, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, don't be troubled, don't have any fear. Oh, does Jesus care about you? Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I'm he who lives and was dead. Guess who is this? This is the one that rose from the grave to bring you redemption, to bring me redemption, to bring you forgiveness, to bring me forgiveness. But he didn't go to the grave not because he had any strength, uh, because he could have just stopped everybody before he went, but he went to the grave because he loves you. His love was why he died for you. And he who lives and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Forever and ever I will be alive. I have the body that is an immortal body. I have the body that is a body that was changed from corruption to incorruption. I have a body that will change from that was changed from mortal to immortality. And I'm gonna give you the same body. I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death. Oh, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I want to see him just to look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Home oh, at last, cares are past ever to rejoice. Guess what? It is Jesus I really want to see. The more I see of this world, the less it means to me. It is Jesus. I really want to see. Jesus promised them this. And he said, behold, I send the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is a Holy Ghost from God. The promise of the Father is a Holy Spirit from God. Let's say it together. The promise of the Father is a Holy Spirit from God. But tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from an eye. Power from an eye is another name to say this is the Holy Spirit. This is the promise of the Father. And where did this happen? It happened in the book of Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a mighty rushing wheel, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as of fire. Like as of fire, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. That's his Shakan presence. That's his Shekinah presence. That's a presence emanating from the glory of God. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, there will be no need of the Son because God himself is the light. And I saw... No temple therein in the last book of the Bible, Revelation. For the Lord God Almighty and he is the Lamb are the temple of it. And the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun. Woo! Neither of moon for it to shine for the glory of God did lighten it. What's the glory of God? That's the Shekinah presence emanating from his Shekin presence. There's no need for light or sun or moon. Not even a supernova can touch this. The Lamb is the light thereof. And the nation of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth shall bring glory and honor into it. This is our Savior, our Lord, and our King, and our God. Approach His presence with your whole heart. Approach his presence with your whole life. And the Shekinah presence of God that emanates from his concentrated presence of the Shekin will touch your heart and your life. And you will find out that Jesus is your Lord. Praise God. This is my few words. Praise the Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I want to be your dwelling place. But for me to be your dwelling place, I got to set my heart to the place so that you can 
Use me, mold me, melt me, wash me, cleanse me. I want to dwell where your Shekinah presence and your Shekinah emanates from. Lord, help me.